All right, there's the next episode of True Wrestling Fan Discussion, continuing our Clash of the Champions review series. This is going to be WCW Clash of the Champions 8, Fall Brawl. I'm your host, Mike. I'm Frank Manskin, too. we got a lot to cover here. Uh, this was also the build-up for their inaugural pay-per-view, Halloween Havoc. Mm -hmm. uh, they drew a, a, a way better rating on this Clash of Champions than they did the last one, which was three months prior. Uh, way better card, in my opinion, as well. Uh, they drew a 4.7 on TBS with, the, with this one, which was pretty good. Uh, Columbus, South Carolina, September 12th, 1989, roughly 2,600 on, on hand for this one, but it don't matter. You're still in the flair country. Uh, they had a great main event. Uh, first time ever you get flair and Muda actually getting into the ring, facing each other in this, uh, encounter. So let's, let's get on with it. Jim Ross, Jim Cornette doing the commentary on this one. Uh, before the, uh, the whole night transpired right before the matches. Gordon Soley interviewed Gary Hart on a number of occasions due to a rumor mm -hmm. that there was uh, some rumblings going on in Gary Hart's camp. Uh, some uh, They were dissatisfied, alleged problems. He, he at first uh, said there was nothing going on, everything was fine. Later on, we'll find out and get to the bottom of what the rumor uh, truly was. But our opening match on the contest for Clash of the Champions was the Road Warriors against the Samoan SWAT team. I really enjoyed this match. I thought this was one of the better tag team feuds of 1989. And I've quoted many times as saying that they had a plethora of tag teams in 89 that were doing really good. Uh, and then all of a sudden, just when the when the yeah. calendar hit 1990, it was just gone. Poof. It was a fugazi. I mean, it's just... It was, and it's a shame, too. And this rivalry was really good. I thought it was interesting. You know, they're going back and forth. You know, this this should have just been billed as a street fight, but Nick Patrick is in the ring. Good old Nick. They Hawk gets his hands on Paulie Dangerously saw a phone, uses it in front of the Patrick. We're not calling for the bell. We're just we're gonna ride it out. Go. Whatever. And he hits um what's his name? Uh Fatu with it. They do the Doomsday device, and the Road Warriors get the pin. So they are on one tremendous winning streak at this point. Unfortunately, they're going to call it quits you know, several months from now and head to WWF. But they looked in, in peak condition here. Uh, like I said, this rivalry was really it was really good. Dangerously did a good job with the small and SWAT team. It looked like there was a little, uh, and uh, I guess... Well, the Samoan SWAT team pretty much was pissed off at the end, and why Dangerously was raising his hand, I have no idea, but that aggravated them to the point where they pushed Dangerously and they left him in the ring by himself. So it looks like there's a little dissension in the ranks there for Dangerously, so we'll have to see what transpires with that. So our next match on the card was the debut of the Z-Men yep. taking on the Cuban Assassin. Tom Zink. Wow, he, they really gave him a five-star match here, boy. But they kept trying to put him over. Oh, he's a 13 year yeah. veteran. He's so that don't mean squat, boy. This guy sucks. I mean, Tom this Zank? Is pretty... no, 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 no. Cuban assassin. Oh, okay. I was gonna say, I was like, no, Tom, Tom Zank Zank was very wrestler, underrated. Yeah. Very yeah. underrated. Just no, no gimmick. But exactly. You know, you you put him in singles, then you throw him in a tag team. No build up to either or. Then he's back to singles. No, no, no real backstory, no nothing with him. It was just I go to the ring, I do my job, I leave. That's it, man. And but the fans really did like him. But again, underrated, never really quite pushed, never given his true potential uh, to see what he could have done in, in NWA, WCW. And this match was pretty much a squash just for his debut, a little over three and a half minutes. And you know he applied a sleeper hole on the Cuban assassin and gets the victory there. So. As we're saying that there, there's there's no no storyline, no nothing for him. It's just a basic sleeper hold uh, type move, and that's it. It's over. It's done with. And Pretty he gets much. There, unfortunately, but he starts off on the right foot, and he's one and zero in NWA. The next match on the card. Well, before we go to the next match, we I should tell everybody this was Ric Flair Day in Columbus, South yeah, Carolina. Man. Columbia, South Carolina, excuse me. Governor Ka Carol Campbell had made September 12th, 1989, Ric Flair Day. I wonder if they're still honoring that. I seriously probably, probably not. Probably not. No. They, you know, and if they gave him the key to the city, let me just tell you now, Rick, they changed the locks. So 
Now on to our next match. The actual the 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 speech that the governor gave was a lot better than this upcoming match, as it was Ranger Ross versus Sid Vicious, one half of the skyscrapers. Yeah, and this was basically just to put just to put Sid over. That's it. Just to establish Sid as you know being a wrecking machine. That's all it was. Squash match. You know. And he he looked really good. Yeah. And you know they they would you know Ross was saying this is I see a potential champion here, no doubt, definitely. Um, I, I know you 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 must have seen it in the last couple of days. I have posted on social media that uh, he's gone from power bombs and choke slams to babysitting the grandkids. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but he looks good. Uh, I'll say that you know. Yeah, he's always been in great shape. Mm-hmm. Takes care of himself. Oh yeah, and he looked good with the grandkids. So it's nice to see that he's enjoying uh, enjoying retirement there. However, Ranger Ross was not enjoying this match whatsoever as Sid Vicious does what Sid Vicious does. The uh, the nice little tilt-a-whirl, razor's edge, power bomb, spin, whatever you want to call it there. I really love that move that Vicious mm-hmm. did. He, he really can't do it to a super heavyweight like himself, but when he uh, faces somebody, Ranger Ross yeah, is ready to wait. Yeah, it's nice to see how he can uh, dominate the match. And his patented power bomb, one, two, three. Sid Vicious is the is the winner, and I mean, you could it could have gone either way in this one. You could have done a tag team match with him here or not, but like you said, to show his dominance and his power, um, this was a uh, a good way to do it. So Sid Vicious, and the match was only sixty eight seconds. There you go. So Ranger, sorry, Ranger Ross, you've been squashed. So. Next on there, and I, I I don't know why we had to see this, but we saw Missy Hyatt and Robin Green, aka yeah, yeah. Woman, the on a shopping thing. spree. Yeah, it's point is, oh. okay. yeah, it's a waste of time. It really was. Ric Flair know. gave him the credit card. Yeah, okay, that's great. It's wonderful. The American Express. Yeah. Don't leave home without it. Yeah, let me tell you a quick little story about American Express. I'm over in Italy. And I went into the. Don't tell me you tried to use that card. I tried there. to use the American Express and they, I couldn't use it. Yeah, they don't take it. Yes, they do. They do, and just not that, certain oh, places. Serious? The smaller stores, for whatever reason, they take Visa and Mastercard. The bigger places, everyone takes American Express. So oh okay. apparently, it isn't everywhere you want to be because I couldn't use it in certain places. But the Visa and Mastercard worked everywhere in Italy. So for those who wanted to travel to Italy. Don't use American Express. Yeah, because they don't take it. Ever. Leave home without it. Oh, that's all right. I never told you about the time I was in, uh, what was it, um, Belize. And, you know, my wife decides she wants to go into a KFC of all places, you know, because we don't have that here. We don't, yeah. And they tell her how much it is and she's trying to pay with change. I'm like, what are you doing? You're lucky they take, you know, the bills. They do that's take U.S. They- currency, yeah. But yeah, but the bill, the not the chain. Yeah, yeah the chain, she yeah, had yeah. a little bit. Oh, let me get rid of this. And the woman's looking at her. I'm like, I know, I know. that's funny. lady. You're about to shut this place down. Just yeah. stop. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. She's also the same one that decided to go. Come here, boy. To uh, one of those uh, drug seeking dogs when you go through customs. Oh Jesus Christ. Yeah, exactly. This is this is what I'm married to. God bless her. She's an angel. Anyway. Moving on to the next match, this is one of my favorites on the card. It was for the NWA Tag Team Titles, the fabulous Freebirds defending the titles against the Steiner Brothers. And when I tell you that the tag team division mm-hmm. in 1989 was yeah. stacked, boy, was it. Mm-hmm. And this match, it, 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 to me, it was great. I could see it a hundred times if you want to, if, with this rivalry and keep it going. Um, they, they let it all out there. Scott looked great. Rick looked great. You know, they get Cornette, especially Cornette was given the background on these guys as well as the Freebirds. Um, the the ending is what left you in a cliffhanger. And if you if you pause it at the right moment because their camera angle couldn't catch it, you can tell it was Robin Green that did it. But as, as Scott Steiner goes into the rope, it looks like or they try to tell you that the, he tripped his leg up in the rope. When actually it was her tripping him up, mm-hmm. and then Michael Hayes puts the DDT on him, and the fabulous Freebirds uh, keep the tag titles. Of course, Rick Steiner is saying that it's Missy Hyatt that did it. Scott Steiner is saying that Robin Green did it. They can't get an actual angle on the camera. Meanwhile, you can kind of see the brunette hair wow. slightly, so we know where we're going with this story. It's it's just it's ridiculous. If storyline wise, I can see why they did it, but as a fan watching these two fight for one of the first times ever, you, you 
you want to see who's the best mm-hmm. and have it come out clean, even though the Freebirds don't fight clean. But <laughs> no, it is it is what it is. The Freebirds get the the victory and keep their tag team championships. So the next match on the card was kind of a, a waste, but what are you going to do? It was Flying Brian Pillman versus Norman the Lunatic. And I'll give I'll give uh, Brian a lot of credit. Yeah. He body mm-hmm. slammed him. He 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 went toe to toe with the big moves. man. Yeah, he they was were able putting to him get over. Him on his feet. They were they were they were putting him over heavily. Oh yeah, and of course this wouldn't be the last time we saw Brian Pillman tonight. But the fact that he was able to and and Norman was billed at uh, I think they said three eighty. The fact that he was able to body slam was him impressive, was yes. impressive. Yes, you know missile drop kick getting him off his feet. And who would have thought just a, a regular old crucifix pin gets Norman the loss and Teddy Long is chewing him out, dangling that key in front of him. I thought Norman was going to put him on his ass, but not, it wasn't meant to be at this point. But this was another um, some short match, sorry, three and a half minutes on this one, probably time restraints considering the last three matches of the night. So... Right after this, once again, Gordon Soley is trying to get the bottom of everything. He's interviewing Gary Hart, who's now getting pissed off at, at Gordon. You know, he's got he's got business to take mm-hmm. care of. Um, it is, now it is in regards to Terry Funk, who supposedly wasn't there. However, he was, but he had surgery on his arm, uh, storyline-wise, thanks in a large part to uh, Ric Flair hitting him with the branding iron in the arm. So eventually they'll show Terry Funk – from the hospital room and how he'll say, you know, he won't be able to wrestle in the main event, mm-hmm. but he will be there. Well, you took out Rick's neck. Right. He's going to take out your arm. And this is good. And this is going to lead up to uh, their, their next encounter, which I believe at a clash, it was an I quit match. So next match on the card, Dr. Death, Steve Williams, your favorite versus Mike Rotunda. I thought this feud and this, all this was over with apparently nope. not. We Just get more of it. My God. I mean, you're not a fan of, of Dr. Death. I don't see anything appealing in him. I'm a fan of Mike Rotunda. I mean, the, the man's got tons of talent. I just didn't see it about Dr. Death. I, 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 don't, I don't know. Just something there. But, however, Williams went for, you know, was going for the power slam on Rotunda. But, you know, Rotunda was holding the rope. It, and, of course, the referee decides to kick his hand off of it. So the momentum put Rotunda on top of him, but Williams was able to reverse it, and that's how we get the pin. So the referee is an ass- assisted Williams in getting the victory here against Rotunda. So once more, Williams and a few with the varsity club. So following that, Gordon Soli interviewed Lex Luger on how he's the total package. Which at this time he really is. Mm-hmm. He he at at this point I'm really surprised that title is not all around his waist. Yeah. The the long reign as United States champion, and of course he has a title match uh, uh, tonight at the at the Clash of the Champions eight. So here we go for the NWA US title: Lex Luger versus Wildfire Tommy Rich. Yeah. We couldn't get anybody else. This is another guy I couldn't get behind. Just, you know, oh, he's a former world champion. Yeah, it's great. It's great. It's great. great. He's Bob Backlund doing his trying to get her second run in him. This is what this is. Because he retired and came back. I, I just never saw it in him. Even when they turned him bad, I still never saw it in him. I just I mean yeah. maybe maybe you had to be an old school diehard maybe, yeah. NWA fan. I don't know. No, either way, I just I didn't care for this match. I was actually pulling for Lex Luger, to be honest. And of course, you know. Rich had, you know, Lex Luger in the sleeper hold uh, on the apron. So he kind of he uses like a jawbreaker or, or neckbreaker rather to break the hold and just kind of slithers in under the ring. And that's how we get the pin. So no torture rack, no nothing. Just that little basic move took out wildfire Tommy Rich. There you go. So, so Lex Luger is still the United States champion. And of course, after the match, Tommy Rich tried to attack Luger in the uh, entrance way. That didn't work for him. So, and then of course, finally, Gordon Soley once again interviewing Gary Hart, which is where we now here is where we find out about Terry Funk, mm-hmm. who would be replaced by Dirty Dick Slater in the main event. Which our main event now is Sting and Ric Flair versus Dirty Dick Slater and the Great Muda 
They had the interview with Sting and um, Flair. That was just they, they, did, that, yeah. they did their interview. It's still kind of it's just weird seeing Flair as a baby face, man. He's like putting Sting over, and I don't know. It's just Sting mentioned uh to you know how him and Ric Flair mm-hmm. in the first clash they were like this together, you know, each right, other's yeah. face, and then he goes back and he goes, yeah. now we're like this. And Flair's he like was... give him a high five. Flair's excited. It's just it's weird. It's... I don't know. It's just weird. Not just weird that he's a, a baby face, but a weird that he's high fiving Sting. Right, right, right. It's just it's it's yeah. yeah. This is your number one rivalry ever. Yeah. In it's, my not, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's just it's it, it's it's just weird. For it's me. weird. I, I I'm expecting Ric Flair to turn on him. Yeah. yeah. Which is going to come in 1990, yeah. but the fact that they're just they're working as a cohesive unit right now is just weird. Because yeah. you notice. Side note here, even when the NWO came around, you never really saw Sting and Ric Flair teaming together when Sting came back uh, as the Crow. I mean, even though they had a common enemy. Right. So, no, there was that four games, but he told them all kiss his ass. Mm-hmm. So, this match itself, I really did enjoy. Again, it was one of the first times Ric Flair and the great Muda got into the ring together. Which was was really good. I love the fact that they were pushing Muda back then. I didn't understand a Starcade all of a sudden they just buried him. Yeah, I don't know. That's what I didn't understand. They just know. this guy was skyrocketing yeah, to be in the, in the main event, and, talented, and they yeah. just shit all over him. Yeah. So because remember, Muda uh, is the television champion. Mm-hmm. He beats Sting for it. Sting right now. Uh, Sting. Ric Flair is the current WCW NWA WCW champion. So you got champion versus champion in that in that regards. And it was really good how the two of them went back and forth at each other. And even with, with Sting, now the odd man out in this was Dirty Dick Slater, but because Terry Funk is not in this match, Funk is in this, I think this match is a whole lot better. Not taking anything away from Slater, it's just Funk is on a different caliber, different pedestal to me than, than Slater, obviously. So naturally during the match, as Sting apl- was applying the Scorpion Deathlock on Muda, of course, Flair and Slater on the outside. The referee's distracted by them. Gary Hart comes in and hits him with a roll of coins, which shatters everywhere. I, I love that. And, of course, um, Muda didn't get the pin on that point, even though Sting was down for quite a few minutes. Um, eventually, during the match, and right before this is where they call uh, it was really the disqualification, Dick Slater kind of knock the referee out. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, here we go. All bets are off. Here comes uh, Terry Funk into the ring. They're using the Brandon Iron on Sting's leg. They're taking out Ric Flair. Uh, nobody came uh, to, to their aid only to help because, remember, Funk put a paper bag, a plastic bag, I should say, <laughs> over right, Ric right. Flair's mouth Fair, yeah. and, uh, and tied it. So after the commercial break, they, you see Brian Pillman down oh, there, there, and they said how he gave him CPR, and I think they little, went a little ridiculous, a little yeah. overboard with the whole CPR thing. But I mean, it was just also weird since we're you know we're doing the Monday Night Wars, and then we got oh Pillman and Flair here, interesting. Okay, and of course we got Pillman and Flair. What we're doing uh, then? So Pillman, you know, unfortunately didn't help them during their ass whooping, but came down to see if Flair was all right because Flair was also busted open mm-hmm. and stuff. And so Funk, Slater, and Muda got the – even though they lost the, the match, the, lost the battle, they won the war on this night. And this is going to heat up going forward, man. This, this is going to get really good. But unfortunately, like I said, they buried Great Muda by Starcade, and I didn't oh, understand that. I didn't get it. Um, but overall, this was a – this was a, a not a great clash, but a very well. It was done. good. It was it was entertaining. I really liked it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Especially the, the main event, obviously. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right. Well, that's our review. Please like, comment, share, subscribe. We'll see you guys soon. Take care.